Howdy partner. Do you want to learn how to build a Toya grid pergola? Well, you're in luck. We're going to show you today. Today, we're going to show you how to build this Toya grid pergola system. Toya grid is the company that makes these brackets. It's T-O-J-A, I believe it's pronounced Toya. Um, I think they're a Canadian company. I know a lot of viewership is from Canada, so you may be familiar with them. But um, it seems like a really great system. This is the fourth video in our multi-part outdoor kitchen series. If you've watched all the videos, the first one is making a foundation or laying a slab. The second one is actually building the outdoor kitchen with dry stack cinder blocks and a surface bonding cement. The third video is going to be finishing it off however you want to finish it with tile, paint, or whatever else. And then the fourth and final video is building this actual pergola. If you haven't already, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button over here. That subscribe button really helps me out. It lets everybody go ahead and catch up on all these videos. So thanks for that. Also in the comments, tell me what you would have done differently. That I really appreciate and I like all the likes. So getting back to it, we're gonna go ahead and walk you through step by step of how we actually make this system. And at the end, we'll do a walkthrough of everything. So stay tuned. Howdy partner, again, come on over here. We're getting all set up. We got the wood all laid out to start some staining. The wood that we're using is pressure treated pine. Um, you can use a cedar, which is really good outdoor wood if you can find some cedar 4x4 posts and other sort of uh, cedar planks. Or you can go to pressure treated pine. Either one will last a long time. But if you do not want the natural color, if you want the pine to have a little darker, richer, you know, better color, you can go ahead and stain it. What we're doing is a woodland cedar stain, which is uh, going to give it a little bit more of that more cedar type look. You can roll this on real fast. You can, if you turn around where we've laid the boards together, you could roll those. Now I'm just going to go ahead and roll them, uh, do them four different times. Or you can brush them where you can use a rag. But just to kind of show you, as you get it on there, it's going to go ahead and it's going to go on pretty smoothly. There's not much to it. And we're going to probably do two coats just to really get it nice and worked in there. And this is sort of giving us a medium brown. So this is what we're, what we're going to do. And once we're done coating all these, then we're going to do the cuts. We're going to do everything before we cut it. And then we'll go ahead and do the cuts and get the pergola hung up. Stay tuned. We finished staining all the wood and we let it sit outside for about two weeks now. When we got this wood, it was very saturated with the pressure treating. So it's dried up quite a bit. They say that these toy grid components should slide on relatively easily. So for like this one, it does. But then for some of these, they're still not quite dry enough. So it's only going on about halfway. When, um, when we originally got these, it wasn't going on at all. So they definitely have shrunk down a little. We're gonna go ahead and go against the recommendations. And if it doesn't fit, I'm just gonna tap it on with a mallet because they're really, really close and I don't wanna wait any more weeks. I'm kind of impatient at this point. But if you wanna do it right, let it dry totally. So this particular kit we got from Toya Grid is about three components. It is this one, which is a base or a wall mount. So we're gonna use the wall. It is a two by four rafter mount. And then this heavy duty uh, mount that will go ahead and make the front and the side in the corner. This is really, Really good quality, really uh, heavy duty. Now again, I'm not a uh, influencer or, rec or sponsored by Toyota Grid, so see how it all works out. But uh, seems like a pretty, pretty neat kit. The idea of this is that if you don't want to, you don't have to make any cuts in the wood. So if you're just making a standalone kit, you can just buy wood at the store and slap it together with no cuts. Ours, we're gonna have to make some cuts, we're gonna have to make some measurements um, because we're doing a custom size and we're mounting it to the house. The other thing you wanna be particularly careful about is if you are having to tapping these on with a mallet, your cuts need to be really good because once you tap them on, they're gonna be very hard to get off. So we'll walk on over there and check it out. So the top piece coming out of the post is gonna be an eight foot four by four. You can also just put a six by six if you get that kit, this is a four by four kit. And then we're gonna have this piece that goes on top with another front header going across from here to this one. So we're at about 66 inches for that front piece because it just goes from here over to here and is attached in. So we'll do eight feet up, 66 inches this way, and then figure out what the length is to the wall. 
So you want to make sure that you're nice and flush here and you got all the way down. This is a nice drainage area. Then once you get it fitted on, go ahead and drill a pile hole. Then take the screws that are provided. These are number three head screws, Phillips number three. Drive them in and then snap on the nice caps. Good to go. Starting to take shape. You will see it's laying in the grass here, but that's because I didn't want to scuff up the front faces of the brackets. But we've gone ahead and we've inverted it. We put all the screws in, test fit it. And then now what we're gonna do is this is gonna be the front post leg. So we're gonna take it back, flip it over and get it set against the wall here before we anchor it into the wall with some timber lock screws and also some tap cons into the concrete. So stay tuned. This was helpful if you have a couple strong bodies. I'm going to see if my camera crew can help out and we should be able to get this knocked out. As you start to get all set in place to the wall, you either need to put up a ledger board or you need to make sure that you're going into studs and then you need to anchor it with a ledger grade a fastener. Ace. You want a pilot drill concrete hole. Then after you drill those, we had spray painted some washers black just to kind of make them look better. I also had spray painted some screws, but then we end up using a different size. So you want to go ahead and just get that washer fit onto the screw. It's a Tapcon concrete screw. Kind of clean up the dust there. And then you want to tighten that in. Just tight enough, not too tight. Very good. Choose to do any 2x4 rafters. Go ahead and measure what you need. Measure them out. Then you're going to go and attach one side of the rafter tie. And then we're going to put it up there. And that's where we're going to put the other half on. Once you've measured out where you're going to put your rafters go ahead and slide the far one over screw it in we're still doing the pilot holes and then do the same on this side there we go keep on doing that until all the rafters are set so we've stained some of these pressure treated two by twos like all the others, we've marked the side that we think is the worst, and that's going to face upward. We're going to install these to give a little more shade. So we've cut them to length, and then we've worked them up here. So what we're going to do next is we've taken some small pieces of 2x2, two two, and we're basically use those as spacers in order to space them all evenly. So we've cut them to where they'll be flush with the edge of the pergola, and then we're going to put the spacers in. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a two-inch brad nail just through it, just to hold it for a minute. And after we get them all lined up, line up on that side, brad nail it, and then we'll screw and actually put in exterior screws to hold that together forever. So it's just a temporary way to put it down there while we're spacing it out. Keep on watching. As we're going, we're just going ahead. We're keeping the spacers on all the parts throughout the entire top. And then we're just driving in all the screws. Stay tuned for finished product. Well, thanks for staying with us. We are just about done with the pergola build. Now what we're doing is we're installing some solar lighting for the middle, as well as some of these cafe lights along the edges. So to install those cafe lights along the edges, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole, measure them out already. Go ahead and drill a hole. And then we're going to screw in eye rings. I actually got these already painted in black, which is nice, or you could just spray paint them. And then we're just going to lift those cafe lights up and zip tie them on. So that should look real nice. One other thing to add is the finished product on these solar lights. It came out really, really great and it gives some excellent lighting during evening time, as well as the center light, which really helps to light up the workspace. All right, we are all done and it looks just fantastic. 
This Toyo Grid system was really easy to work with. I'll give you a couple tips and tricks in just a second. Um, but it created a wonderful finished product that is extremely, extremely sturdy, not moving an inch, and fully customized to whatever your outdoor space works with. A um, couple things I learned as I was doing this build is number one, you know, I talked about the drying the wood so it fit easily into the brackets. That is very key. It definitely was easier to dry fit the pieces that fit in there easy. The ones that we had to tap a little bit, um, you know, you had to have exact cuts and everything. So I would recommend drying it out. Also, this thing, apart from being very sturdy, is very heavy. So on the Toyo Grid website, they recommend that you have several people help you to lift it up. They're not kidding. I just about fell off the ladder and crushed myself with this thing. I didn't have enough people. Definitely invite a couple friends over and have them help you when you're setting it up because that will make it much easier. Thanks again for tuning in to the entire Outdoor Kitchen series. I hope that this gave you some inspiration. Again, if you have any ideas that you think, oh, you should have done this or that, please put that in the comments. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. This concludes our Outdoor Kitchen build. So I hope this inspired somebody. And just remember, if I can do this, you can too. Thanks for watching and keep tuning in to Mr. Greg's.